I'm Amanda McGrew, and this is Bank After Ball. This is Bank After Ball. This show was created to talk about athletes' journeys on and off the field in the world of business, entrepreneurialism, and finance. Let's see what's going on today. Today, we have Amanda McGrew talking about her athletic career, business endeavors after sports. Thanks so much for having me, Kevin. I'm super excited to be here. Tell me a little bit more about you and your, your experience as far as athletics and you know what, what got you to here? Yeah, I was born and raised in Santa Monica, super close by, um, been kind of a beach bum my whole life, uh, was a basketball player um, ever since I was a little kid. My family, I was one of four kids, so I grew up playing every sport, uh, whatever season it was, I was kind of in every sport that was available. Um, basketball was the sport that kind of I loved the most, and once I got some scholarship offers coming in, I was convinced I needed to get out of, out of California and I decided to go across the country to the University of Rhode Island. It was amazing, um, played, played four years out there. My senior year, I actually tore my ACL, uh, so I was given a fifth year, um, and I transferred to, I actually didn't transfer, I graduated from URI, and then took my fifth year at UMass Lowell. That fall came, and I eventually went to, I went to a camp over in Germany, took over a short contract for a, a girl who got hurt. She blew her Achilles out, so I played for a few months over there, and then came home and that was the end of basketball forever. <laughs> um, that, yeah, that was it. Took a job as a, as a PE teacher and a basketball coach. So I didn't get too far from it. But uh, yeah, I'd been, and I'd been doing that ever since. So let's go, let's delve a little bit deeper into your injury that you had, you know, before your fifth year. I mean, what, what did that teach you about business and how you live your life now and building your company? When I look back on it now, I definitely start to see all the elements of like, oh, that's when like your mental health was suffering. That's when, you know, you were by yourself in your, in your, in your dorm room and, you know, both the men's and women's team, basketball teams which were kind of my closest personal group of friends were all traveling. It was the middle of the season. I was by myself. I was, you know, going to rehab every morning at 6 a.m. And I mean, it, the, the good thing about that is that you had like a team of people who was willing to, who had like a vested interest in getting you healthy, right? Like I actually ended up tearing my ACL again when I was coaching and at that point you're no longer an athlete there there's no one interested in like getting you healthy for any particular reason um you know so it's kind of falls all on you so the first time I did it I, I feel like I had that support system that was in place to kind of help boost me up a little bit and show me that like hey this is really hard but people do it every day and it was in that moment of like you're by yourself in your room night in and night out and that's when you when I really realized like oh this is where you show what you're made of so let's jump in a little bit more into the playoff dating app so how did you come up with that? Man, I hate to say it, but my dating life sucked. <laughs> my dating life was horrible. Um, I wanted to make it easier, um, selfishly for myself first, but now I'm kind of realizing that, that the glory and the, the gratification is really coming in, uh, you know, making that easier for hopefully millions of other people. And I was convinced that I wasn't the only one, and I was hoping that was the case. So, you know, with, with you know, we're at just about 50,000 users so far, so it turns out I'm not the only one, which is great. Um, but yeah, I really just wanted people to be able to have a little bit of an easier time connecting in an already super difficult online dating space where, you know, you don't really always know who you're talking to. So what makes you guys different from all the other dating apps out there? So it is designed to be exclusive for uh, current and former college and professional athletes. So anybody who competed beyond the high school level, uh, the reason we kind of set the bar there was one, because I thought, you know, my college athletic experience really, uh, you know, set me apart from, you know, all my teammates who played in high school, I really thought making it to the college level was a huge accomplishment um, and something that I think every college athlete should be, very, should be very proud of. I also know that, you know, you're not really able to verify or validate that you competed at the high school level via the internet, right? So every college athlete or, you know, up until, you know, 99% of athletes can, can show some sort of athletic bio um, on the internet proving that they played at such and such junior college or such and such D1 school or on this professional team or on the Olympic team or, you know, it's all on the internet now. So that made it really easy because we have a verification process where you have to submit an athletic bio and then submit a selfie, you know, proving that you are in fact who you say you are. That's the scariest that's part the of big, the internet. That's the biggest thing about the internet. Yeah. People not saying who they are. Yeah, exactly. And I, I mean, I've had, I've had people try to sign up who are not college athletes. Or I've had people sign up who 
are actually trying to create an, uh, create a profile for a teammate of theirs to be funny or whatever. And I, I think it's like, even if it's a harmless joke, it's just, just such a scary thing to be talking to someone and assume I'm talking to you and find out that it's, it's not in fact you. Let's talk about your athlete experience and like what, what you've taken from the athlete experience now and take into your business and how you, you know, the teamwork aspect of it, as well as understanding that failures happen, right. but like how you get through those things, because of, especially with your injury. Right, and I, and I think at the end of the day, a lot of it comes back to this idea of grit, like I said, and just kind of like showing up every day. But as much, I mean, I played a team sport and I was used to being surrounded by people who had this common goal and we were all kind of going for the same thing every single day and ready to grind it out together. And like entrepreneurship has been like really lonely. <laughs> It's been super lonely where there's days where you're kind of wanting to preach about your, your wins to people, whether it's family members or friends or whoever, or you're wanting to like commiserate in something that bad that has happened and share that with somebody. And if they're not really in it with you, it's hard for them to understand. The other thing that I think, you know, coming from my athletic career and I was not getting to college, I was most certainly not the most athletic person on my team. So it was really one of my assets to be able to be well aware of what I don't know, right? I'm, I've always been someone who's well aware of my strengths and weaknesses. I was never going to out jump anybody in the gym, but I could definitely out shoot you. And I, like, there were certain things that I knew about myself. And I think in business, it's, that's really come in very handy. Like there's certain things that I just don't know. And I'm not going to try to convince anybody that, that I'm some expert in that, in that area when I could be going to find that information from somebody else. So I am never hesitant to, you know, ask for advice or guidance or suggestions or criticism or whatever, because I know that that's what's going to help take play off to the next level. So talk to me more about your experience as a woman, being a woman entrepreneur in business. Yeah, I think it's been interesting because there's a lot of support in it lately specifically. I think it's a, it's a big deal to kind of get female founders, you know, notoriety and get them some publicity and get people talking about them, which is really, really cool. Um, but again, it's something that was so foreign to me that I didn't really realize. I knew, listen, I knew I was going to be on the minority side, right? There's not a lot of women in, in tech. There's not a, a lot of minorities in tech. So it's like you're part of this kind of group that is, you know, looked at like it's not getting a lot of opportunities. Um, being in tech specifically, I think, is interesting too, because that is completely dominated by men. You know, in terms of being a woman specifically, I think you're already, you're already used to kind of I don't want to say getting the short end of the stick because that's not what it is, but sometimes it can feel that way. And I think the support when they hear that it's coming from a woman is like, wow, this is so cool. And I can't believe you really did this. So I think maybe it's new and I, I who's to say maybe 10 years ago, I wouldn't have gotten this kind of support being a female founder, but it's been really exciting. So let's, let's talk more about life after sports, right? How do we get more athletes to take advantage of the, the thought process of like, Hey, Let's bet on ourselves. Let's, you know, we want to start businesses. You know, we can use the, the networks that we have to do those things. I mean, I think it's about people like you and I and other former athletes who are kind of doing things outside of sports, but, but still have the athlete community so close to our hearts and want to help them to be able to go into those spaces and talk to them and help them. You know, I think, you know, a lot of people have talked about that with me in, in the mental health space. They're like, how can we get these athletes to know that these resources are available? What, what it really takes, I think, is like a, a good public speaker, somebody who can connect with these athletes and the fact that their athletic career is where it is now, where it may be later, where it may not be later, what you kind of see it as, if you've been injured, if you've got, you know, bad grades or a tough family life or whatever, and really being able to get them to buy in to what, to what you're selling. And what you're selling is like a life of happiness, whether sports is involved or not, you know, Absolutely. and being able to show that, like, I know you think this is like the pinnacle of your being. And trust me, I thought the exact same thing. We all did. We all did. And I was like, this is it. This is as high as it gets. Like, this is the best I'm ever going to feel. Right. And, and like leaving that, there is definitely going to be for some people, it's a depression for some people. It's 10 days of like, oh, I'm kind of bummed out for other people. It's like, no, this is the worst feeling ever. So it just kind of depends how you react to that and everyone's different, but like there will be another pinnacle that you could, that you can reach. You just kind of got to kind of give yourself the credit and the ability to, to go find that, you know, and, and place value in the fact that there's much more beyond that, beyond those 10 or 15 years that you spent, you know, competing at a very high level. What is the biggest piece of advice you could offer the next generation coming out? 
I think as simple as, as it sounds is just send the DM or send the email. Send what you were thinking about sending to get the information you need. I think reaching out is something that feels very scary and intimidating to a lot of people. And it feels like maybe I shouldn't do that until I'm at a certain point or until I've reached this amount of money or I've saved enough or I got the LLC or I made the Instagram page. Just send it. Just ask for the information. Ask for the informative phone call. Ask for whatever you're wanting to know. In this next segment, we have bullish or bearish. Bullish implies it's going up. Bearish implies it's going down. Let's see what they think. All right, let's do it. All right, first one, Tesla. I think bullish. Elon Musk just seems like he's got it completely together. He's, he's by far and away above all of us. <laughs> he's got it going on. Uh, Bitcoin. Um, hopefully bullish. I've got some, got some money in it, so let's, let's fingers crossed this thing gets, really takes off. Professional athletes now taking their salaries in crypto. I gotta say bullish. I feel like that's, I mean, it's like, it feels like the new way of the world. It's the new age. Aren't people like, people are taking Bitcoin as payment now. I feel like that's kind of where it's going. Online dating for college athletes. I mean, man, if I don't go bullish, I'm crazy. I think, I think it's, I think it's sky's the limit there. I think it's really going to happen. Especially, I also want to introduce a platform where it's not just romantic, where it's platonic relationships, whether it's networking, friends, you know, pick up partners or whatever. I think that's, you know, just the connection of online athletes, whether it's online dating or just connecting, I think that's completely bullish. Thanks for watching Bank After Ball. I'll see you guys here next week. <gasps>